Good morning. Welcome to this service this morning. Can you imagine that it's September long weekend? Ah, yeah, just think we're now approaching, guess what, the fall. And it's supposed to be a scorcher today. But let's just turn to the Word of God just for a few moments. Our gospel reading is actually from Matthew chapter 18. And in that portion of scripture that uh, we're going to allude to from time to time, Jesus is talking about how we behave towards one another. It's, he's talking about interpersonal relationships and how as a Christian, as a believer, we are to act towards one another. The epistle reading for the morning is taken from Romans 13 verses 8 through 10. And those are the verses that I'm going to read this morning as we're going to look at probably one of the most important subjects that New Testament and the Old has to teach us about God, who God is, and how God wants to react to us. Let me read this portion of scripture. It says, Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, do not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. And whatever other commandments there may be are summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. When we look at that whole concept of love, we realize that it stems from what John says to us in his letter. God is love. God is love. And so we need to understand what love is. First of all, I think that we need to realize that love is not a gushy feeling. It's not necessarily an emotional sense of well-being towards someone else. Our emotions and our feelings can be very fickle. If I eat the wrong thing at night and I have a stomach ache when I wake up in the morning and I look at my wife or my husband, I may not necessarily feel love towards them because I'm not feeling that well myself. And so I realize that my emotions affect how I look at others. So what is love? God says that love is something that is unconditional. God loves us unconditionally. There's no conditions with it. And so Paul in his writing tells us again and again what love is. Not just Paul, but the rest of the Gospels as well. What love is. Jesus is the epitome of what God's love is to us. But that doesn't always help us when we think of how we are to love one another. I think that one of the best ways of understanding love is one that I learned a long time ago, is that love is a commitment towards another for their well-being and for their betterment. Let me repeat that. Love is a commitment towards someone else for their well-being and their betterment. And that's essentially what God did, did to us. For God so loved the world that he gave. And he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever should believe in him should not perish. But should have everlasting life. So we take our model of love from the father. He gave. So we understand that. Love is something we give, a commitment we give to someone else to see that they are put in a right relationship both with one another but essentially with God himself. So Paul in talking about love in chapter 12 of the book of Romans and this morning I'm going to try and let scripture tell us what love is. So in this portion of scripture this, this portion is titled in Romans 12, is titled actually Love in Action. And you can find it in verses 9 through I, pretty well the end of that chapter, verse 21. 
So let me read it to you and, and so you can hear what Scripture teaches us about love and action. Because that's really what we are. Say, because the again, the commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself. So listen to what it says. First of all, love must be sincere. That's verse 8. Love must be sincere. And the only way we can be sincere is if we understand who we are ourselves. We need to be honest with ourselves. We need to be real with ourselves. We need to understand who we are in light of who God is and in what God has done for us and wants to do in us. The Old Testament tells us that a contrite heart, a person who is... Uh, has integrity of heart and mind is the one that's able to love without partiality, without thinking about it, other people in sense of good and bad. Love must be sincere. And so Paul goes on and he writes in this chapter, he says, hate what is evil, cling to what is good, be devoted to one another in love in our commitment to each other. Honor one and one above, pardon me, honor one another above yourselves. So basically say honor, putting yourself or putting others at a level that is, is, is at the same level as you are. So this is what he's saying. He's saying, don't you know, don't be the, 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 the doormat. That's not what's being said here. When he says honor one another above yourselves, the only way we can honor someone else is if we honor ourselves. Notice what it says again. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So loving your neighbor starts with how you love yourself. If you honor yourself, then you can honor someone else in the same way. We need to catch a hold of that. There's, there's this, there's this two-sided coin. There's the negative side and then there's the positive side of the aspect of love. Let me finish reading it. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Notice he says practice it. Doesn't mean we get it perfect every time, but practice it nonetheless. I like that. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. And again, I've talked about that concept of living in harmony. It's harmony has to do with when you're singing, when you're playing notes, when you're doing things that make a melodious sound that is pleasing to the ear. Live in harmony with one another. Don't be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Boy, that's a good one. Do not be conceited. What is conceit? Conceit is when I think myself as being better than someone else. When I see someone else as a stepping stone for my betterment. In fact, I just read an article this, this morning in the newspaper that said, interestingly enough, that people who are selfish, we always think of them of getting ahead, but the article talking about labor relations says that at some point that person stops getting ahead because people recognize their selfishness for what it is. Prideful, arrogant, conceited individuals who do not really think about the betterment of the company or the people that they're working with, but they only think about who? Themselves. So do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. Now, I'll be honest with you, I have trouble with that one sometimes. And Chris is really quick to help me uh, figure that one out. So 
Yeah, I, uh, you know, I got lots to learn. I'm that oak planted by the waters. You know, it takes a long time to grow up. Uh, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, not on the other person, on you, live at peace with everyone. Because the truth is, there are people who are going to hate you because you what you stand for in Christ. You won't be able to live at peace with them because they're going to make your life miserable at every turn that they can. So it's not your obligation to try to placate or, their, or, 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 or trying to make their, their feelings uh, better. You can't do that. But you don't return evil for evil. Rather, you pray for them. You look after them, regardless of how they may look at you, regardless of how they may feel about you. You need to take control of you and how you look at others. Because love is the commitment that I have towards the betterment of another person, okay? And that doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to live at peace with him. Think of Jesus. He didn't live at peace with everybody around him because the scribes and the Pharisees, they hated him. And so he couldn't live at peace with them. And um, then it goes on. It says, do not take revenge, dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. So what is the bottom line again? The bottom line is that we are to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. That's the bottom line. In, in doing that, then we will only want to see the best for those who are around us. Let's be challenged and also encouraged in this concept of love because Jesus loves you and me unconditionally. Let's pray. Father God, we just thank you for your message to our hearts. I pray, Lord, that each one of us Realizing that you live within us and that we have everything we need to love others around us because of your presence. Help us, Lord, to allow God the Holy Spirit to work in us his fruit, his fruit of love, peace, joy, peace, patience. And Lord, just help us to see others for who they are in you. In Jesus' name, amen.